Okay, so I've had the delivery of some switches to replace the shoulder bumper switches. I'm gonna get them, uh, the old ones removed and get the new ones installed. Okay. These were, I think, one pound seventy for ten. So I just got a few as spare from eBay. Um, let's see here. So they aren't going to be exactly the same style as what I'm taking off. I'm probably going to have to bend these legs up, um, and I'll obviously explain that in the video. <clears throat> so I'll take two of them and then the rest are spares so if we look at the switches themselves on the Game Boy you can see um, the legs point down from the button as opposed to back so if I just put these side by side you can see I'm gonna to have to bend some legs down so that they go through the holes on the board, but that's fine. It shouldn't be too difficult. And these are tactile buttons, so they're a lot more clicky when you press them. So, soldering iron's needed, let's switch that on. I think what I'm gonna do is completely remove the entire, uh, the bracket as well. Um, yeah, I'm gonna start with the this left one here because there's a lot more components around this one. Um, so I just wanna start with this one first. Let's get it removed. Okay, so it's actually a lot more difficult to get the um, bracket out with the button itself, but I've got the original one removed. Let's do a little um, some close up of this just to see the kind of quality. You see the legs stick uh, 90 degrees to it, so that's obviously the modification we're going to have to do to our other switches. Don't have that tactile clicky feel. And you can see there are two pins up here that have been, let's get this focused, that have been kind of snipped off. You can see them just there, one and two. Because um, obviously these switches come with four legs. But obviously we only need two, so once we've got the two bent down, we could snip these off. Um, but I'm going to get this one installed onto the original bracket, which is obviously still on the board. It's a lot more work to get them off because the, the way the legs curve in. Um, without a hot air station, it is really difficult to desolder multiple points uh, to remove something. So it is something we're going to pick up in the future. But... Um, money <laughs> so I will get it at some point so now I'm going to install this replacement tactile clicky switch should be nice um, like I said I have to bend two legs up so that the legs fit through the holes on the board and then remove the other two so let me just make sure they line up yep yeah, that seems to be fine so what I might do is, I might use the holes themselves, put the two legs through, and then just try and maybe bend it. Might have to do it the other way to be fair. This way. And then just go ahead, sorry, like that. But to be honest, I think it's probably going to be easier just to do it with your fingers or maybe a hard surface, but that seems to be okay. Yeah, that should work. And then these two, when we get it in, I'll just snip them off. So, back to the soldering iron. Make sure it's up to temperature. Go ahead and drop this in. 
actually sits quite nice to be fair. Okay. So what I'm going to try and do is just get something to hold that as close to the board as possible. Sorry, that was off camera then. What I'm going to do is take the legs that I might snip and leave them to fold over the back of the bracket. So it's kind of like a, a hook behind. So if I just line it up at how I want it, and then push these legs flush. These tweezers are rubbish. I need something else. Let's try a Phillips screwdriver. Okay, that seems to be in good enough. That should hold. Mm, it kind of hasn't. That'll have to do. Right. We do buying some better flux as well. Not a big fan of that pen. enough to hold it yet yeah, plenty I'm just gonna put some more solder onto the bracket legs as well because I tried to remove that but honestly couldn't okay so I'm gonna go ahead and do the second one Okay, that's the soldering done. Um, nice and clicky. Okay, so after installing the shoulder buttons, um, what I'm going to do is trim off those tabs. I don't need them to hold it in place anymore because obviously the solder uh, will hold it in on the underside. So I'm going to trim them off because they could potentially be causing um, a complete circuit or a short or um, whatever when touching these metal brackets. So I'm going to get them trimmed off. Best way to do that, uh, a couple of flush cutters. They'll work just fine. Trim it off as close. So I didn't really do that on camera. I suppose I was covering it. There it is, done. If it would focus, please. Okay, as flush as you can to the button itself. Okay, just like that. Okay, so I know I didn't get it on video, but I've got the switch cover off so we can have a look inside to see uh, just how dirty this is. Now, they sh those contacts should be shiny. They are shiny a little bit, but um, I'm going to clean them up the best I can and pray that that is the reason why it wasn't uh, switching on. So 
and get some IPA and some cotton buds. Dab it in some IPA and just go over the area and drop it in there. And then you have to try and the best you can squeeze that cotton bud in to clean up the pads. Okay, so what I'll do is with some tweezers just go and lightly scrape the surface in there just to try and expose a bit more of the metal and then go over once more with the cotton bud. Okay, that's looking a lot cleaner in there, so if I get it on camera now. Yeah, much cleaner. Hopefully that has solved it. Okay, so taking it apart again, the power switch, it's clean. However, the contacts on the slider, um, I'm gonna try and get better pictures to put up on the screen rather than trying to do a close up. Um, it has an exaggerated version of say, um, these pliers. So um, it's a complete uh, piece of metal that makes a contact at two points. And I think what it is is these two points are too far down so it's not making it's not bridging the gap enough um, and also one is slightly lower than the other so like I said it is very very small um, I'll try and get a close-up to show you exactly what I mean um, but in the meantime I'm gonna bend these back into place okay so um, <clears throat> a lot has happened since the last uh, thing I filmed when I was bending those pads uh, back up so that they would make contact on the switch um, because of how old it is, how corroded um, and how used the switch has been. The metal became very thin um, and snapped. So when I bent it up, um, it just snapped the tab and then that meant the entire switch, um, the thing that slides along was basically useless. So I hunted around for replacement switches online and just to replace that little switch here, um, people are selling them for 10 to $15. So once conversions factored in and deliveries factored in, you're looking at about 10 quid for one tiny component for a Game Boy Advance, which this cost me 20 quid, uh, 20 pound altogether. So half the cost of this for a switch and I kind of refused to pay that. So obviously I needed a solution. I'm gonna look into potentially modding this um, because my solution at the moment isn't uh, permanent. It's only gonna be temporary and I'll explain in a second. I wanna see if I can find maybe like a push switch. So rather than a slide, you push it at the bottom and it's like a, you push it, it clicks in, you push it, it clicks out and then once I've found that and figured out how to do it, I suppose that could be another video for the future. However, for now, what I managed to do was, and I might have to do some drawings or take some pictures or something, but I took apart one of these old switches and you can see these legs sticking out. I got the entire length of that uh, because it is very thin. The width of that is perfect. Um, I got the length of that out of it bent it into a V-shape, trimmed it down, because it was a bit too long. And um, for the slider that goes inside, on that, I used my um, soldering iron, <laughs> forgot the name of it then, used my soldering iron to press in a very thin tip to melt the plastic and therefore try and hold that piece of metal that I put in. So like I said, it's not going to hold, it's not going to last. However, um, after putting it back together, it does work. So finally at the stage where I can put this Game Boy Advance back together and test out the shoulder buttons because that was the whole uh, reason why I made this video or this part 
was to fix the shoulder buttons. Um, I didn't expect the power switch to be that much of a challenge, but it was. <laughs> Let me just get this all put back together then. So that seems to be all okay. Let me just check I've got both board screws in. No, I'm gonna do both this board screws right now. Is this a Phillips? Yep. There should be a Phillips screw in here somewhere. If not, one of these will be. Usually the smaller one. Yep. and perfectly working, let me see if I can get this on camera. We have got perfectly working left and right bumpers and a nice clicky feel to them as well. Perfect. So obviously I forgot to put the power switch in, but that is um, replacing the shoulder buttons on a Game Boy Advance with some tactile ones. I will leave a link in the description to where you can buy some of the buttons that I purchased. Um, I'll also leave the specifications as well for the buttons, just in case that eBay listing does uh, disappear. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video.